Have you ever hurt just one cylinder? I mean, that's such a pain in the butt, right? Because you hurt one, what are your options? I mean, you don't really want to have to go five over and order brand new pistons if you only hurt one cylinder. So that's what we're gonna to try to do, because we did, we scuffed one cylinder here, pretty bad. So what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna to try to see if we can't clean this up in less than five thousandths. That way we can actually reuse the other pistons, replace the one piston that's been scuffed. Then what we're gonna do is use line to line skirt coating on all the pistons to bring back our piston to wall clearance. That way we're saving the money of not having to buy new pistons, not having to hopefully wait as long because hopefully they can get one done faster than they can get eight done. But the idea is let's try to save as much material in the block as possible. So if we only have to go maybe a couple of thousandths to save this one hole, then we can go a couple of thousandths over on all the others, use a line to line skirt coating to make up that couple of thousandths, then we're back good again. So let's see. So the first step in this process is we've got aluminum in the cylinder wall. So to make it where we're not pushing that aluminum in with the hone, so it has to go further and further and further, we're gonna use an old trick. We're gonna use lye, which is also in most uh, like Drano, liquid plumber type products. We're gonna use some of that, along with a little bit of Scotch-Brite and some elbow grease. And we're gonna work in here and see if we can't get that aluminum out of the cylinder. That way when we go put it in the hone, we're not moving all that aluminum around trying to clean it up. We're just gonna be cleaning up the iron. So hopefully that can save us a little bit because if we can only go a thousands or two over, man, we're gonna be in good shape. It's gonna be pretty nice. So let's get started. First step, gotta get the old good liquid plumber. Now the key thing to be smart here is you definitely wanna put on some gloves because you don't wanna burn yourself. Uh, regular lye is actually better than liquid plumber, but liquid plumber's easier to get but if you can get some lye that's the way to go so what we're gonna do is put our gloves on here because there is definitely aluminum visible in the bore right now fortunately we have our usb microscope that lets us look in and we can use the hatch view cross hatch angle program now here's the neat thing we can go in there and turn the cross hatch angle off because we don't need that and then we can actually see right here is a big piece of aluminum. You can see down at the bottom where it's iron and it's darker color. This is nice and shiny, that's the aluminum. So let's see with our liquid plumber and our scotch bright if we can get that aluminum out and clean this bore up a little bit easier. We're gonna pour some of this down the hole here. This is pretty liquid, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of this directly on the scotch bright pad. And then we're gonna apply a little bit of elbow grease here and see if we can't get that aluminum out of the bore. It looks like it was actually worse at the bottom of the bore than the top of the bore. Okay, so we've been using some elbow grease and we've actually seen really good progress on how much of the aluminum is actually gone from the cylinder. I want to show you right here. You can probably see there's a couple little shiny silver spots down there at the very bottom of the bore. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the microscope and we're going to go down there and we're going to look around to make sure that, see how big that area is. And that way we can make sure when we put it in the home that there's no aluminum left in the bore. So far, made some progress. Let's see what the microscope tells us. So it looks like there were some rust pits on this block previously. Looks like the aluminum has found one of those rust pits and embedded itself in there. So maybe a little more elbow grease and we can clean that baby up. But it definitely found a little hole in there. Fortunately, it's towards the very bottom of the bore, but that's also where this problem looks like where it got started too. Maybe because of those rust pits. Man, check that out. That, you gotta love it when a plan comes together. 
Yeah. There. Yeah. You found him. Yeah. I don't know which one that is, but that's definitely what you were working on. Mm -hmm. and, and it's dark. It's not shiny. Yeah. So that's a good sign. Okay. So that was super cool. <laughs> you know, I learned this trick from my dad because as a carter racing in two cycles, piston scuffing was up and happening at the racetrack all the time. So they would have to hand home the track. So somehow, many years ago, someone figured out you could use muriatic acid or lye or something to help clean up the aluminum so you could clean it back up and hone it at the racetrack and carry on and not scuff it again. Because if you leave any aluminum in there, guess what? It's going to grab the piston again. That's not a good thing. So here we did. We got it. A little bit of scotch bright, a little bit of liquid plumber, and now the aluminum is gone. So now we got to put it in the hone and get it honed back right, and let's see how much it takes to clean it up. Okay, so thanks to the guys at Rottler, Embry, all the guys at CNC Blockworks, they let us borrow the hone and we were able to get it cleaned up. Three thousandths over, got it all cleaned up. And then Kenny at Tennessee Abrasives got us these really cool Scotch Bright abrasives. So we could have honed it the exact way we did before, but we didn't because we wanted to use the Scotch Brights. And it is a beautiful trace. It knocks all those peaks down. It's super smooth and flat on top. Still got the valleys underneath. I think it's actually better than before. So I'm kind of actually glad we scuffed it and hurt it. Cause now we're going to be able to go get the pistons, get the three new pistons coming. And then we're going to be able to put the line to line coating. We're gonna put 5,000 clearance, uh, skirt coating clearance on all the pistons. Then it will self fit itself. So it might actually be better than it was before because that line to line will let it fit in a little bit better. So we were able to go three thou over, save five pistons, line to line, put it together, stay tuned because when we go to the dyno, I have an expectation. I'm not gonna tell you what it is right now, but I have a number in my mind. We're gonna try to make it, so stay tuned. The last time you saw this block, it was in the hone at Straub Technologies. This is the one that we scuffed the pistons before. We had three scuffed pistons. One was really bad. We got it all cleaned up within three thousandths. We were able to save five pistons. We got three new pistons from the guys at CP. Use line to line skirt coating on all eight pistons. New rings, new hone. The guys here at PME put the engine back together. So now that's where we are. We're in the dyno cell at Pro Motor Engines in North Carolina. We're gonna run it and let's see how she runs with this new hone with that line to line skirt coating. See how it does blow by wise and we'll show you the results. So that's last time, just to check ourselves, that's yesterday. That's right now, how about that? That's pretty good. Do one more just to make sure.
So now we're at 32 degrees timing with the VPQ16 with the big carburetor. Let's see what kind of number she makes. There we go. Seven ninety one. Wow, that's a huge gain. This engine, when we first found it last year, it had been rebuilt twenty years ago and just sitting in the shop. It made seven hundred and thirty three. All we did was hone it, new rings, new pistons. Of course, we went from old school full round piston, old school type hone, old school piston rings. O forty three one five. Three millimeter went to a modern 0 0.7, 0 0.7, two millimeter. We put little bitty lateral gas ports in the piston. We put gas ports in the rings. We doubled them up. We did all that. We changed the fuel. We changed the carburetor. That, just those changes, was basically 60 horsepower. This thing is making a little bit more vacuum than it did before. So I'm gonna say job done. Both of Dad's engines, both Ford C3 engines, we did the complete rehaul on it before with valve train, pistons, rings, hone. This time, we left the valve train alone. We just changed the hone, the rings, the pistons. Both times we put the carburetor on there, we both times we put the oxygenated Q16 fuel. So definitely the carburetor's worth some power, the fuel is worth some power, but my gosh, Using the Rottler H85 to get the cylinder board geometry and surface finish just dialed in. Using the thinner total seal piston rings. Using those CP Ford side relief pistons, even the line to line skirt coating. That entire package, man, that's worth at least 40 to 50 of all of this. It's pretty nuts how much power we were able to gain just by making a few small changes. I mean, same block, heads, cranks, rods, cams, rockers, springs. All this stuff is literally 20 something years old and it just made 791 horsepower. If you like this video, we have a ton more just like them coming up next.